Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Aho here with, or oh, sorry, Aunt Gracie here with uh, KissAnalog.com. Yeah, she must be pretty bored to want to come out here and hang out with me. <laughs> but sorry, Gracie, I gotta review a book. <laughs> oh, so sorry, just give me the stink eye. Um, this is a good book. This is the Practical Design of Power Supplies by Ron Link. Now this book. It's more of a practical book, and it's not as thick because it doesn't have a lot of extra math, a lot of extra theory. This one is written, you know, really where you can just kind of see the meat and bones of power supply design. So it's not going to be into a, a tons of de details or theory, but there is enough here where there's enough meat, I should say, that you can really chew on it and. He's got a lot of good topics in here, okay? I'm gonna walk you through some of these things. We're gonna take a look at this book. Now, I paid six, well, the book was priced $69.95 back uh, whenever it was published, 1998. <laughs> That's been a while, right? Still in publication. So, my theory on this, um, it's still in publication because, first of all, it's worthwhile. It's still, it still has great information in it. Uh, power supplies have advanced, but the basics, the stuff that this covers, still pretty much the same. Okay, there's new things, there's lots of digital control, a lot of different things, but the part this guy covers is still is still relevant. It's still pretty much the same thing. Maybe there's some new controllers, there's new things, and anyway. So uh, the other thing is writing a book for power supply. It's not going to make you rich. <laughs> and, you know, bless the heart, these guys that write these books, I I threatened to a few times, and I've been told some horror stories. So, anyway, I just... It, you have to put a lot of blood and sweat and tears into writing a book, and it takes some time. Uh, and then once you do, you might see a second edition come out, but a lot of times you don't see these guys writing half a dozen books. It's just... There's just... You know, when you're a power supply guy, there's enough ways to make money that writing books isn't one of them. And I think once you've written a book, you're like, okay, I got, you know, I accomplished that. I wrote a book. Okay, yeah, I'm done with that <laughs> and move on. So it's too bad, but there's just not a lot of copies you can imagine that you're going to sell for power supplies, right? And so the price is high because it has to be. You're just not selling that many. And... It has to be worthwhile to even print them. So, but I'll tell you what. Right now, I think the this price has gone up to 100. Wow, it's more than doubled. It's gone up to I think 150 bucks or something like that. But Amazon links below. Appreciate if you use those. Free way to help the channel. Uh, they're like 89 dollars new. But because they've been out for a while, you can get them used. Uh, I think for like 38 dollars and. I believe there's like 14 on Amazon and there's probably used books and other outlets too. But I'll have the link down below. Again, use those links. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I'm going to walk you through this book, kind of show you what it's about. Uh, I bought it because I heard about the guy. Now, he's been reviewed well. I mean, this book's been well received uh, by the Power Supply community too. People like uh, Bob Mamano. He's from Unitrold. The guy, he's very well respected. So he's not going to put his stamp of approval on a book that he doesn't believe in. And he's not going to do it just because maybe he knows him. I don't know whether he does or not. Now this guy went to MIT, which that in itself is pretty respectable. Especially the fact he wrote a book. Because <laughs> it's, it's kind of ironic almost. Because to go to MIT, you're going to be a pretty brilliant guy. But, uh, and to do power supply stuff, I think you have to be a pretty good engineer. Um, but, uh, I just haven't seen a lot of MIT or those guys at that level get down, especially write a practical uh, design type book. So, you got to hand it to him. Yeah, this guy knows what he's doing and he was able to approach... The rest of us fellows and uh, do a practical design book. <laughs> so I'm going to walk you through some chapters and 
yeah, take a look at this book, see what you think, okay? Look, the first chapter is just the introductory. They talk about power supplies and stuff like that. Some interesting stuff. It's not real, it's only a few pages, so, but it's in, in, interesting. Just in the table of contents, showing the introduction, how he covers these topics. Chapter one introduction covers things like the AC mains and the fact you could have a lightning strike. High as 6,000 volts with two ohms of impedance. So you can have 3,000 amps coming in. And in the introduction, he talks about things like solar cells, showing some curves for charging, and some high-speed requirements for loads. Still, only in the introduction chapter, he's still covering things like the main converter output LC with an additional LC. This is something I like to do. And he has a couple good practical notes. All right, so in the second chapter, he covers topologies. So let's take a look at those, okay? And that, the topologies are like the, the type of circuit you use to accomplish what you're doing. Is it a ISA converter, non-ISA converter? You know, is it a boost converter or is it a forward converter with a transformer? So that's the topologies types. Let's take a look and see what he, he goes over. And here we go, uh, chapter two. Uh, selection topologies you can see the starting of them but hold on so yeah look at them all he covers quite a few of them and he talks about there being literally you know there's hundreds of topologies covering important things like you know decisions to make bipolar versus MOSFET continuous versus discontinuous synchronous rectification and further in the book he's still talking about continuous versus discontinuous this has to do with the boost converter down here and talks about capacitor limitations power limits practical limits of number of outputs buck boost practical notes limitations of the buck boost forward converter so you can kind of get an idea of how he covers these topologies all right then chapter three Practical selection of components. Again, the word practi practical. <laughs> so, yeah, he talks about capacitors, ESR, and and chalky diodes and transistors and op amps. So let's take a look, and I'll show you what we're talking about here. And chapter three, selection of components. You can see all the how he breaks it down. So we got capacitors, chalky diodes, transistors, op amps. He talks about resistors. How do you know how much resistor can take in dissipation? And he talks about the types of resistors. And things like selection ratios, maximum voltage, and temperature coefficients. And the power ratings, of course. And then for capacitors, you can see, you can see there's a nice table that he provides. In regards to capacitors, he talks about aging, very important subject when you're talking about aluminum electrolytics, and he has a practical note here. All right, and then fourth chapter, practical guide to instrumentation. You know, like multimeters, scopes, power supplies, generators, and he talks about those, so let's take a look. In chapter four, practical guide to instrumentation starts off there, and there we go. Uh, it talks about calculators and calculations. How many digits? You know, we get this calculators that have lots of digits, right? But then do our multimeters have that many digits? So then he has a statement here. The final result of the calculation can't have more digits than the least accurate measurement. Yeah, this goes into multimeters, DVMs, accuracy versus precision. Okay, so now in a chapter that's not a simple subject, he actually adds a lot of pages to. It's one of the bigger chapters, uh, Magnetics, Practical Guide to Design of Magnetics. And I think he knows what he's talking about. So let's take a look. See, cover some of the, the physics here, ideal transformer, real transformers, practical design, first try, second try. And you can see all the, the flight back a practical design of a flyback transformer talks about this flux density, two formulas, question mark. So, so. Let me just show you some of the pictures he has, kind of talking about the theory. And then things such as core selection, There's some formulas, some graphs, and some core selections. And then a practical flyback design. 
and you can just see I just want to show you some of my highlights I've made to put some stars next to here because it's made some very important points so another big chapter he has is practical uh, feedback design it's another complex subject so let's take a look so kind of a refresher course like on Bode plots transfer function control theory and then to continue on with that subject you can see uh, it talks about stabilizing the loop current mode control and some concepts and system stability now I'll show you I must have been bored one night this is some of the kind of background information he's providing but yeah I went to uh, Mission Impossible in 2000 Lowell's Theater I'm not even sure what state I was in at the time yeah so I was uh, reading his book must have thought it was a light book to carry I could read it in line in the movie theater <laughs> and then he continues on how to measure closed loop response and uh, yeah there's my nice bookmark must have bought some gloves if you're wondering where my yellow post-it note was it was on this subject this is a uh, slope compensation kind of a more advanced subject probably but yeah his uh, idea is showing how to do that okay so the next chapter uh, seven it's practical design of control monitoring circuitry. It's related to the last chapter, so it's a good pickup point. And it covers, you know, some important concepts. So let's take a look. See the subjects he covers? And they're finished up here at the top of the page. Startup circuits. And, uh, and so I highlighted this thing here, the hiccup mode. Uh, talking about soft start. So just wanted to... Make sure I remembered where he put that in the book. Tidbits, talking about hysteresis, resistors and shunts, differential amplifiers, where to pick up the current sense on the high side. Making a note over here, not to do it here. That's the kind of practical notes he puts throughout the book. All right, so again, practical stuff, right? So now he goes into the practical design of efficiency and thermal management. You see the items he covers and he's got these mill handbooks these are military design guides so there's the equation there and you know one of the examples he gives and things like notes like this 90 percent is doing great goes into conversation talking about gaining an extra two percent and just about how it's radically harder to get that extra two percent and then examples about you know making tables of where you get your losses and how much losses you're getting where. It's good to account for them and find out where they're coming from, right? And just to give you an idea of what the Mill Standard 217 that I referred to before is, uh, kind of going through this math and showing how Mill 217 reliability standard uh, comes up with how to derate for capacitors. And it's really nice because he gives a nice practical design of VMI. So let's take a look at that because, you know, you can really get, you know, chase your tail on that, get, get pretty in depth, or you can do it this way. Talks about common mode, normal mode, switching waveforms, capacitive coupling, and ground, signal ground versus power ground. A lot of information about grounding here. Uh, low frequency filtering. All right, and then he continues on with uh, these subjects. Mobs have capacitance, two for the price of one. Pretty tough topic, right? Simple diagrams of normal mode and common mode noise. What can be a complex subject is grounding. And then he gets into actual design, selecting values for. Now, sometimes when you see this uh, common mode inductor drawn that way, that's what some people refer to as a Zorro. All right, so a great takeaway from that EMI chapter is just having a basic understanding of the difference of differential mode, DM, you'll see sometimes noted, sometimes known as normal mode, and it's a normal power mode, or common mode noise. So differential mode, otherwise known as normal mode, or common mode, okay? A lot of times you hear common mode. So, important takeaways from that chapter. So, and then next and last chapter, he goes into worst case analysis. So, let's just see how he covers that. 
Mathmax versus Simulation Monte Carlo Sensitivity Analysis. So it has some examples here. RMS versus Worst Case. Mathmax versus Simulation. And then we talk about Monte Carlo versus sensitivity analysis, and it goes over a lot of explanation about how this is done and shows the circuit to be analyzed an example. Okay, I'm going to show you his acronym table and a data sheet that he uses as an example for worst case analysis. Yeah, so let's look at some of these appendix he has in the book, okay? Okay, so it's just a list of acronyms used in the book. So it's nice that he offers that in case some of those acronyms are, you know, not familiar. And then for the worst case analysis, he shows the data sheets where he selects the information to use in those analysis. Okay. Okay, and then of course there's the index. And then after the index, there's the about the author. All right, so what do you think of that? If you, I, I think if you can find a used price, especially if you want to build a library. Now, there's a lot of different ways you can get information, but just having a small, concise book like this, it's, it's a nice book. I've got, you know, you can see I have my little yellow tab that I like to put in these books. I even got my name on the end of it. But I've got oh, a bookmark there. <laughs> it's funny, it's Gore-Tex thing. But, I've got yellow highlighting in some of these pages, or pink highlighting. So, yeah, some things that I've picked up. So, I've been doing power supplies for a long time, and even before he wrote this book, but I picked it up, went through, and thought, yeah, good stuff. And sometimes, even though you've learned a subject, when you look at it again, you, you're reminded, oh yeah, I gotta remember those items, you know, those little points sometimes that you get especially if you're doing you know if you worked at the same place doing the same kind of designs you're like oh yeah there's some good points there i gotta think of so it's good to have different books i think and that might be a good one for your library anyways just one i wanted to show you okay all right thanks for watching we'll see you next time